lots of stuff going on in AI regulation, oceans of money being poured into AI, and AI is the new supervillain. You're watching the AI report, lots of exciting stuff to cover today. Let's get into it. Where to begin? I'll look at all of these news here, a lot of tabs. Okay, today we begin pretty much at the same point where we left off yesterday. Can there be an effective international body that regulates AI development? So Google's DeepMind released a paper investigating such possibilities in partnership with the universities of Oxford, Harvard, Stanford, Columbia, Toronto and other hotbeds of super smart people. The responsibility of such an entity would include ensuring equal access to AI technologies to as many people or groups as possible, but even more importantly, managing the risks of these technologies. There are four proposed models to structure such an organization. I will leave a link to this paper if you want to check it out. And OpenAI published a paper on pretty much the exact same topic. They define the term Frontier AI as highly capable foundation models that could possess dangerous capabilities sufficient to pose severe risks to public safety. They proceed to define three possible building blocks for managing these risks. Again, I will leave a link to the paper in the description. We have a lot to cover today, so we can't go in more depth here. I'll just make one quick point. It sounds like these calls for international regulations are coming from a good place, but it's also suspiciously convenient for the companies that are leading the innovation in this space. And many fear they might write the book on AI regulation that pretty much makes these companies monopolies. We have to wait and see what this kind of international regulation would look like, or rather if it will happen at all. For now, I'm inclined to say that this sounds like more of a good thing than a bad thing, but the margin is not too big, maybe something like 60-40. Elon will host a talk with representatives Ro, Kana and Mike Gallagher on Twitter Spaces today at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. They will talk about the risks and benefits of AI. Elon has the ear of many lawmakers, I think this will have some impact on how AI is regulated. The thing is, I think Elon has been a bit dodgy when it comes to AI. He was involved heavily in OpenAI in the beginning. Then he kind of jumped ship and left the company do its own thing. Now he's trolling most AI companies while also wanting to be a part of the game with his own companies. Ah, Elon, not a simple guy. Okay, a bit more boring talk about regulation and then we'll move on to more fun topics, I promise. So, yesterday Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer held a classified meeting in the White House with senators and military personnel and AI experts on how to regulate AI properly. There are quite a few interesting statements that the senators gave after the meeting. Senator John Kennedy says AI has this extraordinary potential to make our lives better if it doesn't kill us first. Senator Martin Heinrich says one of the interesting things about this space right now is it doesn't feel particularly partisan. So we have a moment we should take advantage of. Huh, there you go. AI got the Republicans and the Democrats to agree for the first time in history. He also added that these models are not built to tell the truth. They're built to tell you something that sounds like an appropriate English language response. Senator Elizabeth Warren said the large language models that AI systems are being trained on are not designed for accuracy. Senator Chris Coons said he left the briefing more concerned than ever that we have significant challenges in front of us and that the Senate needs to legislate to address these. Senator Marco Rubio says the one thing I'm certain of is I know of no technological advance in human history you've been able to roll back. It's going to happen. The question is how do we build guardrails and practices around it so that we can maximize its benefits and diminish its harm. Okay, sounds like Senate may be getting the gist of it. The most important thing here is that pretty much none of the senators had the clear idea on how to regulate AI properly yet. We continue with possibly the most exciting AI news for today, at least in my opinion. Anthropic release Claude version 2. The new Claude is better in conversation, reasoning, coding and maths. And again, in my opinion, most importantly, it will have improved memory and capacity for input. Specifically, you can input up to 100,000 tokens in Claude now or somewhere around 75,000 words, which is huge because you can now actually feed it big documents and web pages and entire books even. Until now, 
GPT-4 had the biggest input limit of up to 32,000 tokens. Amazing stuff. As soon as I finish this video, I'm gonna get to playing around with Cloud2. And in related news, Cloud2 is now available in Po as well, so you can access Cloud2 on the Po platform. Next, Google abandons the plans for an AI-powered chatbot app for Gen Z. Wait, what? They had plans for an AI-powered chatbot for Gen Z? I guess there's just so much going on in AI that sometimes even I can't keep up with it. Well, there was this AI-powered chatbot app for Gen Z called Bubble Characters and now it is no more. Rest in peace, Bubble. I feel a little bad for Gen Z. The world has been shoving screens and technology down their throats since the day they were born. It's not their fault they're a bit weird. So maybe one last platform where they can waste their lives online is not such a bad thing. While we're at Google, they're joining the group of companies that are being sued for copyright violations and using people's data to train their AIs. Well, I think being sued for data theft will be seen as a badge of honor for these companies. Almost like the toughest kid on the block having a few scars to go with his stories. You're not in the business of AI unless you're being sued for this. The lawsuit is worded very similarly to the OpenAI lawsuit. I wonder if it's the same guys. Next, Microsoft rolls out AI-generated ad headlines and descriptions. You now have the choice between wasting your money on ads yourself or letting AI do it for you. Honestly, I wonder what took them so long. I also wonder what will happen now to the bazillion startups that were based on this exact feature. Anyway, I'm curious to see how good these headlines are. I'll test this tool soon and I'm pretty sure Google Ads will quickly follow suit. In other Microsoft news, KPMG, a company that I'm first hearing about now, but I'm gonna pretend like they've always been an important part of my life for the next few seconds, plans to spend $2 billion on AI and cloud services through an extended partnership with Microsoft, aiming to incorporate AI in its own core services. So, KPMG is probably one of the most boring companies in the world, providing tax and advisory services, and now they're gonna become even more boring by investing $2 billion in AI. Well, I managed to use the words AI and taxes in the same sentence, and now I feel a strong urge to fall asleep. OpenAI and Shutterstock extend their partnership for six more years, allowing DALI to be trained on Shutterstock images. Shutterstock has a special contributor fund that will compensate the artists who contribute media that's used to train DALI. The obvious troll move here, of course, is to pollute Shutterstock with your own AI-generated images. You will confuse the AI and train it on its own data while earning money from Shutterstock. IBM is considering joining the AI chip wars by designing their own in-house AI chips. The chip might be called the Artificial Intelligence Unit. Creative. Besides NVIDIA, AMD and Intel, IBM will also join Google and Amazon, who are also working on their own AI chips. Sounds like quite a party. For now, NVIDIA's dominance on this market is undisputed. They are years ahead of most of these players. Let's see if IBM can make a dent here. Next, Indian IT services provider Vipro invests $1 billion in AI. They will expand big data, analytics, and other AI solutions. Yeah, the splurge continues. Companies are throwing billions into AI like there is no tomorrow. I'm still plotting the perfect plan on how to get my own slice of that pie. I will let you know when my plan is complete. Let me know if you have a plan of yours in the comments. Founder of Chinese search engine Sogo and creator of robots watching his little robots grow up with pride, Wang Xiaochuan unveils an open source language model that is in the same league as ChatGPT. Baichuan, 13 billion parameter model trained on 1.4 trillion tokens is available to approved researchers and developers, can run on consumer-grade hardware, which is important because top-notch AI hardware is not available in China because of the, you know, the whole AI war thing. Speaking of the AI war, this article in the New York Times does a great job of explaining it. I won't go into too much depth on it because that's essentially 30% of my other videos so far. <laughs> I wanted to focus on one part of this article that I found absolutely fascinating. So, essentially, the US has somewhat of a chokehold on the semiconductor engineering and design processes, with the most cutting-edge companies all being located in the US. And the US has a lot of control over the entire supply chain of these types of hardware, and that's especially true for AI chips. 
before the AI bans on China and other trade and industrial technology bans on China that date back to the Trump administration, China could mimic a lot of the US technology and chip design and effectively keep up thanks to industrial espionage mostly. After these bans, they might lag behind. It is possible that these bans force them to actually innovate and catch up or even take the lead. But as you might know, their government doesn't exactly foster the kind of environment and culture that's required for innovation to thrive. So, they might be in a bit of a pickle when it comes to the AI race. The most important part here is the complexity involved in creating these AI chips. Okay, so, get this. Only a small handful of companies can compete at the cutting edge, where breakthroughs cost billions of dollars and decades of research. So, the newest version of the machine for crafting chips can craft structures as small as 10 nanometers. A human red blood cell, by comparison, is about 7,000 nanometers across. It uses a laser to create plasma 40 times hotter than the surface of the sun, which emits extreme ultraviolet light, invisible to the human eye, that is refracted onto a silicon chip by a series of mirrors. The laser is sourced from a German company that has more than 450,000 pieces. An entire EUV has more than 100,000 components of similar intricacy. An EUV is just one part of the process. A cutting-edge factory can include more than 500 machines and 1,000 steps. And yet, an EUV alone is a nearly miraculous human achievement, capable of working at scales and precisions that are difficult to fathom. I truly believe our machine is the most complex thing mankind has ever produced, says Ben Shop, now ASML's corporate vice president of technology. I don't know, I had to geek out a bit here. I find this truly fascinating. Another fascinating thing, large language models are running out of text to train on. Wow. I mean, I guess all the human text ever generated is a finite resource, but is that not enough? It is estimated that all high-quality text data will be depleted by 2026. I don't know, man. Have you seen how much Elon is tweeting lately? That alone seems like an infinite resource of text data. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, finds that 20% of jobs can be automated and performed by AI entirely. Well. Which jobs, OECD? Don't you think that will be neat for people to know? Honestly, I don't know. My position has been, and still is, that so far we've seen very few jobs lost because of AI. This might change at some point, but what we're seeing is even more jobs created than AI and more investment by companies in training their employees to use AI. I still think the end result is increased productivity and possibly more jobs. Next. The AI ship detection program used by Satim Incorporated successfully spots Russian ships that have tried to use a new camouflage technology. <laughs> so the AI is essentially saying, nice try, Russian warships. I can totally see you, you're like hiding behind the curtain. To be fair though, I'm not sure the Russian camouflage tech is working properly. I mean, look at the image here. Do you need an AI to spot the ships? Okay, let's move into AI and healthcare and medicine and biology and all of that. AI predicts cardiac arrests in firefighters. Despite how dangerous you may think firefighting is, most firefighters die in the same way as most guys do, by heart attack. No, but the thing is, firefighters are much more vulnerable to heart attacks because, you guessed it, it's an insanely stressful job. Well. Researchers at the National Institute of Standards and Technology have used machine learning algorithms to identify abnormal cardiac rhythms in firefighters and prevent heart attacks. Good stuff. And more good stuff, as you may know, the better antibiotics we create, the better bacteria become. And we're essentially in a never-ending war with those tiny little rascals. The more bacteria we kill, the more bacteria evolve to become harder to kill or evolve into super bacteria or super bugs. That may sound scary, but now, with the help of AI, we will be able to design even better antibiotics to kill the super bugs. Or super antibiotics, if you will. I guess next super bugs will become ultra bugs, and super antibiotics will become ultra antibiotics, and so on. Peace between human and bacteria is never an option. But now we have AI on our side, let's see how mother nature will counter that move. And even more good stuff, 
AI tools can now design completely new proteins that don't even exist in nature and this is very good for medicine. RF diffusion is a tool that creates proteins that can form the basis for vaccines, therapeutics and biomaterials. For now, not all of the proteins that the tool designs do their job, somewhere between 10 and 20% of them are actually useful. But this can still be huge. This will be huge. It took scientists years to achieve what they can now do and days with the help of these tools. Okay, next, AI can now finally provide an answer to who won that playground fight between you and your elementary school bully. Jabber AI is a tool that can count the exact number of strikes landed in combat sports. Wow, look at this thing. Huh. It gets it all right. I guess if you planned on making a living and fixing boxing matches, your days are numbered. Besides in sport, AI will be used in games as well, or sports for lazy people. Google's project GameFace will enable people to control cursors by monitoring their face and gestures as a gaming mouse. Hmm. The project was inspired by Lancey Carr, a quadriplegic video game streamer who uses a head tracking mouse to play games. And finally, spoilers ahead, you've been warned, guess who's the supervillain in the new Mission Impossible movie? You guessed it, it's AI. I won't reveal more, go watch the movie if you're interested, I just have this to say. Oftentimes, movies have a way of predicting the future, we can hope it doesn't happen with AI. And that's the way it is. If that was the AI report, if by any chance you're still here, it's probably a good idea for you to like and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow.